I have not seen people anywhere in all my travels more terrified by their government than Torontonians, except perhaps in Vancouver. And this includes the denizens of the almost equally woke as Canada states of New York and California. Everyone outside is asking, just what in hell is going on in the great white north? Without a doubt, that is exactly the question that every well-meaning Canadian, regardless of political affiliation, should be asking. What has happened to our great country? Why are we so bitter, angry, divided, and at the same time so complacent that we are watching with folded arms as a single narcissistic man-child runs to the ground everything we've lived for, everything we've toiled for, and everything that we all loved and cherished about our great country? Look around. It's all gone. The economy is in shreds, our democracy is a bigger joke than the Prime Minister's governing abilities and opinions and criticisms are only allowed if they conform to the sickening woke agenda of liberals. And now our WEF puppet Prime Minister is going after hard-working farmers? How exactly did we get here and most especially, when will we all wake up to the new reality? Thanks for joining us today on Front Page News as we bring you another gut-wrenching and explosive clip from Jordan Peterson about the Justin Trudeau administration and his policies. This is a must-watch for every Canadian as the professor details the extent of Trudeau's unconcealed contempt for every man, woman, and child he swore to serve and protect. Please watch, like, and share this video. Also, ensure you drop your comments below and subscribe to the channel. Let's dive right in. Our country was, for many years, despite its rather small population and its general insignificance in the larger scheme of things, a beacon of both possibility and stability. A remarkable example of what a tolerant modern democracy might be. A place where people from multiple cultures could thrive and a staid, sober, but also sporadically interesting and creative place. And now, we're shell shocked sheep ruled by a poser with the maturity of a teenager and the temperament of a Hollywood. D-list celebrity. And because three catastrophes are not enough, here is an additional diverse, to use a hated word, selection, peppered with some questions. How have Canadians failed to realize that our government holds them and our racist country utterly in contempt? That Mr. Trudeau believes that his God-given mission is to elevate the consciousness of his citizens instead of serving their interests economically and practically. That the Trudeau liberals are perfectly willing to make us all poor, miserable, and demoralized just to utterly fail in his efforts to save the planet. That the agents of that party and government are as previously noted, perfectly willing and eager to trumpet that aim, which can be easily attained through the wretched combination of incompetence and moral Machiavellianism that characterizes the Trudeauites as a moral accomplishment. That we could be the freest, richest, cleanest country in the world, but that we are trying hard to be none of those three that we are dividing ourselves among racial lines that are more germane to the U.S. just to ape the very progressive radicals whose idiot policies on the American front are dooming the Democrats to what appears to be the worst electoral defeat they have experienced in at least 50 years. That all the data on the environmental front indicates that the fastest way to improve the ecosystems on which we all depend is to make people richer, not poorer, and to do that with good old capitalism so they have the luxury to think about the long run and the habitat of their children. And I have, as of yet, said nothing about additional issues such as Bill C-11 which is perhaps the most appalling piece of legislation currently on the books. And that's a tough competition on the Canadian scene right now, which renders virtually every internet content provider in the world subject 
to the rules that should not even still govern the CBC and CTV, despite their use of scarce public airwaves, and which will make the rules regulating the net in Canada the most absurd and restrictive in the free and perhaps the unfree world, or the appalling fact of the massive and continuing subsidization of the rapidly failing legacy media. Are you listening, CBC executives? By a government that only requires that the recipients of that largesse parrot back every foolish falsehood and lie uttered by the mad executive branch of our reprehensible government. Or the fact that because of COVID, WTF, really? Parliament has essentially been suspended for yet another year. Or that we are pursuing an energy policy generated by low resolution thinking, Marxism addled ideologues that will not only impoverish our populace by making energy unreasonably expensive. Have you noticed, Canadians, when you fill up your unnecessary vehicles at the pump? But that will only increase the probability that countries such as China will have to rely on coal to produce electricity instead of accessing, say, our plentiful natural gas. And that that will therefore make the carbon dioxide burden borne by the atmosphere greater instead of lesser. They attack our natural gas and farming industries because Mother Earth is apparently on the verge of extinction, but they wouldn't give up their private jets or stop China's activities. In fact, they contribute more to the problem while pointing accusing fingers at the masses. This brings to mind a quote from Gorge Orwell's 1984. The party told you to reject the evidence of your eyes and ears. It was their final, most essential command. Liberals want us to deny the most glaring thing about Trudeau's government, but it is pretty evident that he does not have the interest of any single Canadian at heart, not even those of his NDP buddies. And this becomes clearer with every new preposterous policy and regulation he subjects Canadians to. Just last week, and in the aftermath of the Dutch farmer protests, that we are trying to reduce the absolute levels of the greenhouse gas nitrous oxide produced by those who grow our crops, that's food, folks. Regardless of the amount of those crops produced in consequence. And we're doing that by threat and force. Shades of COVID policy. Instead of working with the farmers to find mutually acceptable and truly sustainable economic and environmental solutions. And that we're pursuing these policies in a world where starvation in the near future in many countries is not only a likelihood, but a virtual certainty. Or the incomprehensible insistence by Jagmeet Singh, sworn enemy of the real working man, that the proper role of the socialist NDP is to indefinitely prop up Trudeau's government, despite the fact that there seems to be nothing in it at all for Singh's party. Not even the cabinet position that a competent negotiator could have at least requested as compensation for the sacrifice of his soul. Or the fact that our judiciary must now be staffed by people who must, or else, swear fealty to the DIE ideology that has devastated universities and is now working its way through many blind and careless corporations, that we are in consequence producing and permanently instantiating a generation of activist judges who regard as their role not the responsibility of abiding carefully by rule of law and precedent, but usurping what should be legislative action so that they can improve the world more efficiently than mere parliament with its lack of Chinese Communist Party efficiency might manage. Or the fact that the OECD has predicted that Canada will have 
the worst growth prospects of the major industrial societies for the next four decades. Please excuse the elevated voice, but good God. The worst? And for four decades? I believe that the federal liberals have run the most incompetent administration in Canadian history. That they have not yet done all the terrible damage that they are going to do. That Canadians will not wake to the reality of the situation because an awakening at that level requires a level of conceptual restructuring and consequent emotional trauma that we have never been called on before to manifest. And that Trudeau's idiosyncratic combination of willfully blind ignorance, moral pretension, and narcissistic self-aggrandizement is so toxic that it borders on, if does not cross the line, into outright treason. And the situation with Singh might, if anything, be worse. He is as dangerously incompetent and immaturely narcissistic as Trudeau, without even being simultaneously canny enough to capitalize personally or professionally on his delusional pretensions. Four decades of slow economic prospects because we decided the best man to handle our financial policies is one who believes the budget can magically balance itself. The evidence is right before you, Canadians. Even though Trudeau's administration, his liberal supporters, and the legacy media are all asking you to deny it, don't fall for the final, most essential command. Don't help to drive the final nail into the coffin of our once great country. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to share with others and give it a thumbs up to help with the YouTube algorithm.